We're talking about security and deployment to other parts of the country. Let's get on Zoom. I'm being joined by Emmanuel Bombandi. He's a conflict resolution and peace building conflict resolution, uh, a conflict resolution and peace building professional. Uh, you can call him an expert as well on that. He's joining me on Zoom. So we pick his thoughts on this development. Mr. Bombandi, thank you very much for your time this evening. I just want to find out. I'm particularly interested. Government says one thing. The NDC says another. To what extent will these developments play out when it comes to conflict resolution? We know elections come with conflicts that necessarily have to be resolved. Thank you for the way you have framed the question. If you begin with the context in which we find ourselves, you can understand that it is normal that when we prepare for elections, and that because of the nature of elections being competitive as they are, they create a certain environment and how policy making and decision making, whether it's about the coordination of security or whether it's about the conduct of elections, then begins to feed into the situation we find ourselves. So my first observation is this. Facts would always exist, even if we try to ignore their existence. What basically this means is to say that we have our truth that belong to us depending on who is making the comment and how that comment is being made. But in these facts that are owned by those who are stating them, keep in mind that at the end of the day, we should interrogate ourselves as a people on the basis that under the Fourth Republic, we claim that our democracy has matured, and yet every four years, there is so much anxiety and tension when we're going towards elections. And so the key question we must ask is, it's not about whether the statements that have been put across are fact or not, depending on the ones who put those statements. It's about how are we collectively owning, as a people of Ghana, what is the collective truth? And I think today, Ghanaians would be asking, will the collective truth lead to a credible and a peaceful general election? How do you answer if that? Yet, yes. Yeah, I thought, I thought you were coming in. Yeah, I, 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 asked, I, I, I was asking, how do you answer this particular question that you put out there? Yes, so the, the, the question I'm asking is, we can spend all the time talking about what I call the smaller insignificant issues. So I'm inviting us to think about the bigger picture. For example, if you look at Honorable Katie Amon, Joy FM is never the problem. And I want to be the advocate for journalists to have the courage to do their work. His voice clip was heard across the nation. So he must be accountable to himself. And nobody needs to ask him to be accountable to the people of Ghana. If he chooses not to be accountable, it is not the media he should blame for creating a problem for him. And that is why, at this time, leading into December, the individual responsibility to hold ourselves accountable and have the integrity and honesty to be people who want to lead and to serve matters more than what you see happening that is pervasive and mm. beginning to create anxiety. So, Mama, and that's, let the, me, that's the point I wanted to make. Okay, let me ask my final question, which is to be that today at the press conference, they gave out details of the number of troops we have across the country. And I know that Operation Conquered Fist has been in operation for some time now. I mean, we did a, a comprehensive work on the state of our borders. And about that time, we got to know that Operation Conquered Face was already being done. Um, but today at the press conference, in the bit so clearly states the fact that this is a, an operation going on. The def defense minister put out a number of people that we have, or a number of military troops that we have across the country. Some people have said that this actually has the potential of jeopardizing the country's security. Thank you. And this question helps to probably be better in responding to your earlier question. So what the defense minister sought to do was to put out the facts. But you must understand the facts in the context that we are relating with today. Mm. 
So the first question is, why didn't he brief the people of Ghana on the same facts he presented today much earlier when the deployment started? Because that would have made Ghanaians to see and understand differently the facts he presented today and how they relate to the context today. Secondly, I read his statement, and I want to put this emphasis. It is not the contestation about the facts and whether deployments have not happened elsewhere. It is the feeling of discrimination that the chiefs and the people in the Aflao area, from their own statement, mm. appear to suggest to be the problem. In other words, if you are deploying across all the borders of Ghana, the people of Aflao cannot feel discriminated against. And secondly, keep in mind that all the conflicts we've experienced in Ghana, including the Konkoma Nanumba conflict, and excuse me to use this example, because when he, uh, the defense minister spoke, he even said that there are more troops in the northeastern part of the country where Konkombes are in a majority. But he, and I know him very well, and he knows me very well. But the, 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 I, I wanted to find the out if it does it jeopardize. In Ghana Do you put in the biggest out the there? the perception of discrimination. Okay, well, well, it, it, we've run out of time, so I just wanted you to clarify for me, from your perspective, does putting the figures out there jeopardize, does it have the, uh, the potential of jeopardizing the country's security? If you can briefly answer that for me. No, that, that for me is not the issue. Okay. The issue is allow your policies not to create a sense of discrimination and exclusion. So okay. Mr. Bomania, thank you very much for your time this evening and for uh, your patience. So I've been talking to conflict and uh, res conflict resolution, peace building and development expert Imano Bombande, who joined me via Zoom on this situation. You're still watching Join News Prime with me, Gifty Ando Apia. How about we take a short break here? We'll be right back.